and good afternoon. Welcome everyone uh, from everywhere today. Uh, welcome you all to the Ar Asia Young Architects webinar series 2021, the future of sustainability. Today, we are very grateful to have the final talk of the series chapter seven, the impact of COVID-19 on architectural profession, um, given by a talk by chairman of Acacia, uh, Archia, uh, Rida Raza. And I'm very happy and honored to be our moderator of today's webinar. So it is my great pleasure to join you all based in Hong Kong. So as I mentioned, this is the very, uh, final um, series talk of, um, of the July series of this webinar series. And um, we are happy, let me introduce uh, the webinar committee architect uh, Desta to share uh, some a quick talk in for the opening. Desta, please. Thank you, thank you, Sami. Yes, uh, again, it's very amazing to meeting uh, all of the speakers and also the participants, moderator and all the things like I'm also very grateful to be involved in this kind of webinar because uh, yeah, I think like we always get a, a lot of and uh, a lot of participants with full of enthusiasm. Yeah, so here as the opening, actually, I just want to, because today's uh, topic is very, a bit special because it's not only talking about architecture, but uh, other things like uh, archipreneur. So, of course, one of the uh, the one that support the webinar is Extalia Obis. Just want to inform you a bit about Extalia Obis. So, Extalia Obis is actually the wholesaler and a retailer for action figures, mostly for the collectibles for Japanese characters, as well as the Western characters. And we can provide the lowest price in Indonesia. Uh, we make sure that all the products are actually original. And then uh, we also have a, we also as one of the official partner from the Good Smile Company, which is uh, one of the biggest figurine manufacturer in Japan. Uh, we offer some products also uh, such as the GSC and then Kotobukiya, Estrim, Ichiban Kuchi and other things. Also like the Gundam, if you know the robotic, the big robots in, in Japan. Yeah. Uh, and our store actually both online and offline, uh, we have here, as you can see in the pictures, uh, uh, actually our store are in Indonesia, but if you are living in Singapore and Malaysia, actually you can find us on Shopee. Just simply type the extalia.sc or extalia.my. Uh, yes, like I said before, the physical store actually located in Yogyakarta. But uh, we can deliver items to all regions in Indonesia, of course, including the Singapore and Malaysia. And before COVID, actually, we act actively had some events as well. So I hope the pandemic will better, will get over soon, lah, so that uh, we can have a lot of people. And of course, like I miss, I miss this kind of crowds. We can have a lot, a lot of amazing events. Uh, so other than figure, we also have some Japanese merchandise, cosplay, etc. And you have, if you are interested, please kindly visit our website at uh, www.extaliahobbies.com or Instagram at extalia underscore hobbies. So actually, this might not 100% related to the sustainability architecture or other things, but we want to support the movement of the sustainability because we realize that this is actually the very important things for our future. And also, I think this pandemic is really push us to become more resilient. So I think today is very amazing. Rida will, will be the best speaker for this because he is an archipreneur with too many ideas. Like it's always uh, very fun discussing with, uh, with him with a lot of things, a lot of ideas. So again, thank you for coming and uh, joining us today. And I'm also looking forward to today's presentation and also discussion. All right. Thank you, Sunny. I'll pass back to you. Thank you, that's, uh, thank you for the quick sharing. Um, again, I would like to thank you, um, Chairman of Akia, uh, Rida Raza from Malaysia and the representative of Akia uh, alumni, architect Mikako Oshima-san from Japan. And a quick gentle reminder before we begin today's session, 
uh, because it's uh, being recorded and will be available for viewing uh, post webinar. So if you have any questions for the speakers, welcome to uh, type in the chat box and you can type at uh, any point during the session without uh, disruption of the speaker. And also uh, we will hold most of the questions until the end of the Q&A uh, session. Uh, this again event is supported by Arcasia Committee of Young Architects, Indonesian Institute of Architects, Yogyakarta chapter and Yogyakarta Young Architects Forums and powered by Extalia Hobbies. Okay, let's start. So this is the quick uh, agenda of today's uh, program and we will um, have uh, it uh, split according to the uh, speech. Uh, we will have a quick sharing from myself as your moderator as well and then uh, we'll go into the meat of the of today's um, program which is shared by speaker architect Rida Rasa from Malaysia and then we have the um, Q&A section at the end. So first of all, I'm very happy to be here today based in Hong Kong and joining this um, webinar as one of the final um, final talk of uh, the series. A quick, quick introduction of myself. I'm also trained as an architect in the States um, from Berkeley and uh, MIT, practice in both um, sunny California and very windy Netherlands and a uh, humid Hong Kong. So where I am now based off. And I have my startup called the Sosa Architect Urban Design Studio practice since 2000. 11 and now working on promoting inclusive innovation in smart city development in Hong Kong with the MIT Hong Kong Innovation Node. So I am also have a slasher. My journey begin as um, a slasher begins with multiple parallel lines of experimental endeavor. Uh, first of all, I was researching with my uh, related topic on urban mobility and smart infrastructure with teaching and also practicing almost a decade ago. So I'm particularly interested in how can we reimagine public rooms in high density, a high density like Hong Kong in a smart way. So part of design process, of course, is to listen from various perspectives of the stakeholders, test and validate ideas via design thinking process. And then since 2019, I have started again another exciting journey with the MIT Hong Kong Innovation Node, which is directly affiliated with MIT Cambridge, Boston and it is cold and windy by the way so you can only study and research the best <laughs> in order to cultivate the innovative and entrepreneur mindset of our students and help strengthen uh, their the regional innovation ecosystem our node has uh, been keeping keep working together with mit faculties alumni affiliates and friends in the local community. So as its name suggests, uh, the Innovation Node creates, um, creates uh, synergies and connection using scientific knowledge to solve problems. And we educate and connect uh, by leveraging MIT uh, uh, alumni and friends and within the region. So quick, um, discussion because we have been talking about the COVID and of course there is a lot of things uh, recently uh, talking about smart city because it's such a buzzword. So I would like to take this opportunity to um, also remind us that uh, a livable city is one that continually can create and improve those physical and social environment with the community resource 
practices and also can enable the people to mutually support each other. And uh, with all uh, the function of life they need or the development uh, of, of their career or uh, of the uh, essential uh, to, to their maximum potential. So the SDG goals are actually a very good reference point of a framework for a better livable city, for a sustainable development for all cities around the region. So I would like to uh, remind um, this as the beginning. So also I would like to quickly share that um, the work that has been done by my team at the MIT Hong Kong Innovation Node. So the stories uh, begin with a research project supported by JP Morgan in 2019. We have completed a Kowloon East Inclusive Innovation and Growth project report looking into uh, uh, an area in blue showing now at uh, the screen uh, of Hong Kong. Although Hong Kong is a very small place, but still with a significant number of people with 7 million people living in this very dense city. So this project aimed to profile the challenges that our city faced, uh, socioeconomically by the people and it within the region. And phase two, we also aim to carry out smart city activities to, to lead, uh, to boost inclusivity and innovation and growth for the Hong Kong community. So um, it is uh, quite a, a, um, a challenging uh, area to, to look into. So welcome to check where it is the map of Hong Kong. This is uh, the area called the Guntong District. Uh, uh, perhaps you will be taken by surprise uh, as Hong Kong is always famous for its food and high rise as one of the most affluent uh, cities, but it has presented uh, some extreme income disparity within. So uh, the note has been um, looking into this uh, area in, de uh, in depth. And this area has been uh, called as the poorest and most densely populated district since 2018 and undergoing a set of uh, socioeconomic uh, transformation because it will be become a second CBD of Hong Kong. So if you look at these images, you will see the in the 1970, it was um, a, a major manufacturing hub and then it will become um, um, moved that uh, all the uh, industry has moved to the, the north in China, southern part of China, the greater Bay Area. And today it has become a very uh, uh, mixed uh, area with new and old together. So we have um, looked into those socioeconomic challenge faced by the underprivileged individual during this urban regeneration project. Thus, we have uh, been doing a lot of work on the ground with the community, running in parallel with an academic workshop called the Hacking Kowloon East, um, an MIT course delivered in a hybrid manner for the very first time. And we have also conducted a full uh, physical stakeholder engagement workshop throughout the late 2000s till now based in Hong Kong. So this workshop focused on how to provide upskillings and new job opportunities for the focus group, which are the stay-at-home mothers, career pathway counseling for the youth, and also technologies um, to enable them to create a more flexibility for the underprivileged and unemployed for thriving economies of startups like co-ops and SMEs, which based in the area. So this is um, some nice photos of faces during the 
COVID times, we are also able to bring together MIT students online and also Hong Kong academics and students um, to bring build the connection between governments and industry to plan for a better city. Um, so we are not simply just adding gadgetry or tech to the infrastructure, existing infrastructure, but instead we uh, promote and want to acquire and process those feedback from the local communities to contribute to the city policy discussion uh, through public engagement exercise. So this people-to-people -people connection we, we emphasize is um, reaching the fundamental differences across all kinds of social backgrounds, economic classes, races, and local and global politics, cultures, and age group. So um, to end, I would like to quickly show a video of the um, of the uh, workshop have done in uh, early 2021. <laughs> Thank you all um, for the last part of all these uh, students who are trying to create either physical or digital strategies to tackle all the uh, questions that we pose in the phase one research on Kellen East and how to bring equitable uh, economics uh, benefits to the underprivileged group so they can uh, insert um, digital um, uh, a solution to to visualize or to engage the local community. So uh, if you would like to learn more about it, welcome to um, our website. Um, we can share, I can share it later or connect it later on. And um, we are looking forward to bring our expertise and also collaborate with anyone in the community that are interested in this regard about um, in a, inclusive innovation growth. So back to now um, as young professional of all joining and all as also as citizens of the earth, what can we do? I'm very proudly to introduce our star of the day, uh, speaker of this afternoon, um, Mr. Architect Rida Raza. He is uh, an entrepreneur. Hello, Rida uh, from Malaysia. So yes, Rida is a trans 
disciplinary creative is trained in different countries, including Australia, Austria, Japan, and Malaysia. Currently, the partner of Abras Architect, AR and Consulting, and Citizens Lab, which is a social entre an enterprise that consults on creative, sustainable uh, community master planning. And he is currently the chairman of Young Architects Asia from 2019 to 2021 and possesses more than 15 years of experience in various fields. He is also a member of the Board of Architects and Technologists, Malaysia Institute of Architects, in Interior Designer, Planners, Arbitrator, Fire Engineer, Inspectors of Work Association, etc., etc. Is currently the director of Ruma Tangsi Sustainable Heritage Community Hub in Kuala Lumpur and has collaborated with many creative and celebrities for various interdisciplinary disciplinary projects in Malaysia. So, welcome, Rita, again. Yeah, hi, Sunny. Hello. The floor yeah. is all yours now. Let me. Thank you. Stop sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Over right. to you. Yep. All right. Can you see? Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Sunny, for the introduction. I was uh, actually uh, dancing to your music just now from your presentation. It was quite an interesting uh, sound and uh, also the video, yeah? So uh, th thank you very much to uh, Arkasia and Akia and especially to Extalia for inviting me to become a speaker. And today I'll be sharing uh, the talk about the impact of COVID-19 on architecture profession and pivoting as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And uh, throughout the last uh, six sessions, we have actually covered many things uh, ranging from architecture sustainability in the subject matter of sustainable architecture, modern sustainability, localizing sustainability, technological sustainability, urban sustainability, cultural sustainability from all different speakers from different countries, yeah? So uh, from, we had a Bangladesh, we have India, we have Singapore, Colombia, and then China, Japan, yeah? And uh, many others. And, but today we'll be not talking so much about sustainability, but we'll be talking about architect sustainability, which is a little bit of a different angle towards the talk about sustainability. Yeah? As the spread today, you look at the, the world uh, map. So the, the pandemic has actually uh, flooded the whole uh, world. And now uh, the, America, the regions, different regions have different numbers of cases. And we are number three uh, Asian, uh, which is with the 37 million cases. Yeah. And uh, from uh, America and also from Europe. So this is actually quite worrying and a lot of... Uh, I, a lot of architects actually call me and ask, how do we uh, pivot from this? How do we become resilient from this? Uh, thus spur the, this talk. Huh? What has COVID-19 impact on the built environment? Many things, yeah? From uh, the macro scale, it has actually impacted in a lot of things in the, uh, uh, many countries, economical, political, and social. 
and then flip flop tension between densification and desegregation. So because some countries are uh, locked down and then open and locked down and open, yeah, and then also a lot of empty public spaces. The work that we've done among a lot a lot of the architects and urban planners to create beautiful spaces is now currently empty. That's very sad, yeah. And then uh, immense loss in tourism. This is uh, related to many things because it did not really only relate to the uh, uh, aircraft industry or hotels, but also it relates to cultural and artists. And in a micro scale, how it impacts the environment is new normal way of life, virtual communication and community livelihood. So people are very scared in terms of seeing other people. Yeah? And then also uh, reduce demand of office space due to remote work and digitalization. So the digitalization is moving very fast uh, currently. Yeah? And the architects respond in the world, many things. Uh, from uh, January last year, if you watch it, this one, I pick up from Google, type architecture pandemic. So I think thousands of works, I think uh, about 10,000. Eh? And then when you can see about this, so many thematics among the architects about workshop, live, move, think, leisure, watch, green, build, work, structure, community. So a lot of architects doing a lot of things throughout this pandemic to help ease the pain of uh, the the challenge of this uh, COVID-19. Yeah? And at Arcasia itself, they actually came out with uh, guidelines on built environment. Uh, this guideline is very interesting. Uh, it's led by, led by Mr. Tony uh, from Hong Kong. Uh, he has spearheaded this team and to create a new guidelines uh, on uh, from the macro scale, space planning, building technologies, adaptive environment, communication and education, flow management, standard operating, to the micro scale of doing uh, buildings, typologies, climate consideration. You can check it out at the Acacia uh, website on this. It's a very good document and each country is localizing it. Yeah? And architects, uh, you know, architects always think about everyone. Yeah, but except they always forget about themselves. Yeah, uh, we always design for everyone, for the public, but uh, we forget about uh, ourselves, meaning that we, we too need to survive in this uh, pandemic. So what is the impact to architects' profession? Many things have changed in the construction industry. Yeah? Uh, government procedures, you know, limitation of business. Like my, myself now, I can't really go out. I'm under lockdown. So my office is autopilot from home. And then uh, with the changing laws, we can, uh, even if we can go out, a lot of the companies are closed. And then the market sentiment, people are, you know, uh, not willing to buy uh, properties now. Or some people with money will buy properties. And the other one is new, new normal practice where different ways of handling things. Eh? And then how does this, all this impact the architect? Eh? We go in detail, how it impacts me. Eh? How it impacts me is, you know, uh, throughout this pandemic is I become fat and then thin and currently now fat throughout this lockdown, open and lockdown. Yeah, so this is, this is problem. I hope when it opened back, I will become thin back. But uh, impact direct to the architects, graduates and students are, uh, loss of time, loss of creative thinking space, loss of opportunity, loss of job, loss of income. So a lot of uh, the young architects, the students call me up, say, uh, Mr. Rida, can you uh, help advise me, give some uh, motivations because we are lacking of motivations. Yeah, And uh, the outcome is physical health, mental health, anger, management, the way we communicate, the way we work, our spending power. So this impact uh, quite big in terms of our ourself. Huh? And then impact to the architectural practice itself. I'm, I'm sure that some of you work in the office or some of you run the office. Uh, seek, some of us seek financial assistance. Some of us get salary cut. Some of us also retrenchment and also office closed down. Uh, I'm not surprised some of the office are closing down. And then outcome, find alternative ways of sustaining. And some of the architects are pivoting to niche services pivot temporary, uh, temporarily to other businesses and some architects so hibernate. Eh? And which path do we take now when it is crisis? Huh? So do we go towards the crisis or we go towards the opportunity? Traditionally, if you want to become a contemporary architect, we always follow the sentiment, fight for the survival, hibernate and wait and see, uh, spot pivoting, meaning you, you pivot among your architects industry where you do still doing architecture, but within that realm, rely on the institute, maybe complain a little bit, and then rely on the government and complain also a little bit more. <laughs> but uh, if you want 
to look at opportunity as an entrepreneur how do you uh, do do this look at it at a different angle you have to anticipate the sentiment thinking to innovate you have to start pivoting multiple angles collaborate with others turning issues to solutions and resilience and survivability this is very important all these uh, six points where if you can actually look into this you can actually easily move around whatever challenges that is uh, go coming towards you and we have to evolve and adapt to survival by acquire, acquiring various skills eh? so uh, a lot of you maybe have stayed at home or you know during the pandemic you are moving around but things are very slow yeah what can we do to enhance our skills to be entrepreneur eh? skills for the future i'm sharing you a lot of tips that i have gone through for the last uh, one two years or maybe previous years is uh, under the world economic forum they did they put uh, in 2025 five skills that is very important critical thinking analysis problem solving self management and active learning yeah this is very important because if you want to move forward this five criteria and else actually uh, another two which is the collaborations and also discipline is very important yeah and we have to have an open heart uh, with an open mind that's what dalai lama say yeah what new skills can we explore let's see together yeah uh first one we have to reorganize ourselves develop our mindset be positive and forward thinking uh and then uh, surround yourself with people who are positive learn to listen and communicate innovative and flexible and be adaptable discipline and execution of thinking collaborative and empathy towards others uh the other part that you can actually start looking is enhance structured critical thinking skills in life through business models yeah and also structured uh, tools uh like business canvas it is something that you can explore and then i think a lot of the architects here always use swot analysis uh that is quite common in universities or practitioners but uh, you there are other tools that you can use like pastel pdca plan do check act for potter's five force and critical success factors so if you know uh, this kind of tools you can actually pivot easily in terms of creating your new business yeah or new uh, ventures and uh, throughout this pandemic a lot of new thematics like i showed you before uh, we should analyze current architectural trends the upcoming trends uh, which is emergency architecture and people uh, looking into personal space home functional built intervention and then economy gastronomy the way people are actually doing their restaurant in a different way some of my friends are doing cloud kitchen and uh, some of us are actually trying to build up the drive through restaurants yeah very interesting and then landscape intervention how do you get people back to the to the uh, open space and another part of the uh, part of understanding is the business trend that is happening uh, one thing that architects is lacking is understanding the supply and demand chain so last time traditionally we always supply and look for demand but now it's different because people are during pandemic are very cautious uh, the business model will be different you have to look for you have to study the demand before uh, going to the supply and then a lot of new young ones uh, young ones are talking about social enterprise model how architecture can become social enterprise that's very interesting in the future and uh, architecture franchising this is something i uh, i heard in clubhouse they were talking about how do we franchise our architecture business uh, i also don't have a clue but this could be a dialogue in the future and also transdisciplinary collaboration how people actually involve in multidisciplinary uh, or transdisciplinary collaboration with doctors engineer uh, with uh, artists celebrities yeah how do we create the new world of architecture and for architects architects usually when we talk about enhancing self technology and adoption we always talk about enhanced digitalization delivery skills we never talk about the whole full life cycle of what we do to need to do a business of architecture number one is actually enhancing digital marketing skills that is very uh, important we have a look because a lot of the architects look into the uh, as silo uh, they look, look instagram uh, pinterest facebook tiktok clubhouse green room medium and then uh, uh, um, uh, what's that uh, the other one yeah uh, as uh, just a uh, uh, twitter twitter yeah just a medium of putting them outside there but you should look at it as integration you should know in terms of how it's used yeah and then the second part is enhance business procurement skill work sourcing 
you should know there are available uh, softwares that's around, apps that's around, Fiverr and Truelancer, uh, Service Marketplace and WhatsApp Business, where you can actually do your business and payment gateways, uh, whether it's uh, fiat money or also uh, crypto money. And there are other royalties platform that architects can put their work, like Dreamstime, NFT, uh, the Shuttle, Shuttle Stacks, and also Etsy. Yeah? And then comes the normal thing that we always discuss, operations of architecture office, talking about Zoom, Google Meet. And then a lot of architects now like to discuss in Discord. Yeah. That's very interesting because Discord, they, they can actually uh, put all the notes of proceedings and meetings. Yeah? And then 3D communication. I like Autodesk BIM 360 because now uh, we can actually discuss virtually and looking at the 3D together. And then uh, also other tools like Trimble, VR tools, uh, React, Visualizer, Genius, Avid, and then Cloud Storage. Yeah? So these are important things. And when you look at this, you have to look at it as Unison. It's part of your business uh, or uh, ventures. Yeah? Enhance digital marketing skill. Uh, a lot of architects, actually, most of the architects do a lot of content. Just that we always put it at the final product. It's very... It's very important for you to actually bring the content and value each of the content because each of the content is 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 valuable in different platforms of the social media uh it can be uh, in the social media different platform is used for different ways uh facebook is you can actually share and also engagement in analytics <laughs> instagram for your portfolio and then youtube for your communication Twitter for your trends, LinkedIn for your collaborate, especially professional, Pinterest for your ideas, and G Plus for your integrations. And with this, you can use your digital marketing. And you can enhance your business procurement skill through uh, going into Fiverr and Truelancer. Uh, throughout this pandemic, I actually uh, collaborate with a lot of young architects using Fiverr. So uh, when my office do work, and then actually I uh, send them sub works to help me with the animations or uh, whatever uh, that's uh, needed in the project. And the other one that is available is Autodesk Service Market Provider, which actually you can market yourself in there and put your 3D assets. That's a very interesting tool that a lot, not a lot of architects are using it. And enhancing digitalized delivery skills. Uh, now, uh, a lot of people are talking about Industry 4.0. Uh, so you can look into four areas, digital design, digital manufacturing, fabrication, digital construction, digital asset delivery management. I personally like to look into these two things, turning to virtual reality, BIM, and drones inspection, because uh, this is much more uh, quite relevant to a current pandemic where we cannot meet and at the same time, we cannot go to site. Yeah? And then what good tech skills to have for the future? Uh, these are some tips that I am currently uh, studying. is uh, learning new apps uh, we use uh, uh, and softwares. And there are actually a lot of apps. If you go on uh, your Android or your iPhone, you can find these apps like uh, if for your kids, to educate your kids, junior architects. Traveling, you can go into World Architecture Travel. Spiritual, there's Vastu or Feng Shui. And if you are very angry, you can go into these apps called Demolition 3D. Uh, whenever I'm angry, I go into this Demolition 3D and I demolish all the buildings. <laughs> and then other fun tools like... Uh, creative like Procreate. Uh, one of my favorite uh, apps is Parallax because I bring in my uh, design and then put there and animate it. Vimage, Splice for videos and VR Augment. Uh, you can actually uh, bring in your VR uh, 3D inside there and play. And what is the next level is actually learn how to actually make apps. Uh, there are these apps called Fluter online that you can actually use. Uh, which you can actually do your own apps. You can learn on YouTube. A lot of my friends learn it in uh, Link Flutter and then use Firebase to upload it on uh, you know, uh, the apps. And then the other one is a lot of architects are starting to look into 3D streaming exhibition services uh, using Gather or you know, uh, using Hexafair to do ex exhibition. Eh? This is very important, interesting because next month, we, next two months, we will have an architect's exhibition. So they are doing full 3D streaming online for all the universities Show you and, the, and then the other one is uh, curating architectural tours uh, I've noticed Show that during the pandemic some of the it's architects are in uh, doing this China. Uh, you know you can see this video this uh, so he, she's doing a uh, architect Valley, Antia from Penang she's doing a uh, visit to Tibet all so a lot of architects are slowly going into virtual houses. tours
And another areas that you can look into is uh, blockchain. So when we talk about blockchain, we are very confused, uh, no idea about it. But uh, there are actually 10 areas where we can actually study. Uh, I've narrowed down to the architects, which is the supply chain management uh, contracts in the construction. Uh, you can actually uh, deal, uh, learn about cryptocurrency and asset tokenization. Uh, NF, uh, and then uh, tokenization, meaning that uh, later I will uh, explain to you about uh, uh, token of items. And real estate, sustainable solutions, energy market, internet of things, gaming, uh, travel. Uh, there are many things you can look at. And one of the things that is now big thing is uh, decentralization movement in crypto, <coughs> where some architects are actually involved in NFT. For people who don't know, NFT is non-fungible tokens. Uh, you know, um, this is an architect named uh, uh, Red Hong Yi. She actually sold her uh, work, uh, I think, a few weeks ago on Binance uh, Market, uh, which we with a lot of money. And then some architects are doing a uh, 3D which a visual of futures future metaverse and metaverse uh, some of the architects are actually designing uh, uh, exhibition spaces in crypto voxels and also uh, maybe in the future the central land yeah so it's quite advanced but uh, you can actually go online and study this and the, those are all ideas how do we actually apply this to our real life the skills how can we pivot for our survival so while waiting for my projects to recommend these are some of the projects i'm working on uh, since last year and now it's I cannot actually move the hotel project, the stadium and also the fire station. I cannot move because it's always locked down. <coughs> My supply chains are all uh, stuck. But uh, the interesting part is now I have to think, how do I pivot to the next movement? Uh, so what I did was I look back at reflect at my architect's journey from my university where I actually studied in uh, Taylor's doing IT and uh, my uh, subsequently doing architecture and legal and uh, my architecture practice and also uh, all my companies that I have set up throughout uh, my experience in doing uh, interests in uh, training, social enterprise and digital technology. And I pivoted back to self-criticizing my growth in terms of my, my experience. This is my experience, meaning that how the, the thing has changed. And if you look at this, this is a very good model throughout the pandemic where people share the business cycle life. Where is the best place you can position yourself? If you are a startup or student starting up, you are here. You are at uh, the startup part. If you, are as, as you, if you already have a business, your business will be growing and grow slowly. And if you are practicing between 10 years, maybe you are already matured at the equilibrium stage and you are more than 20 years, maybe you are dec declining. So I evaluate myself. A lot of my pro companies are still at a startup or even gr are growing slowly, but my architect's office is actually slowly declined. Thus, I have to replan back my business, re-strategize to innovate. I, I hope that I won't ever go down to the crisis level where it's actually a problem in terms of financing. But uh, <coughs> looking at the crypto world decentralization movement, uh, I, start, I, I figured that architecture itself could be part of the centralization movement. We as architects should be looking into, uh, this is a model that I uh, created where things that is matters now in the industry is a lot of people talking about sustainability in the circular economy. So how can architect be part of it? Because we are only at the you know, design of a building, but the whole life cycle, we are not involved. How we can be part of the green economy? Uh, there's talks about people wanting to do tourism and uh, uh, sustainability that's something that is uh, very lacking in the world the other part is global citizenship now there is pandemic everyone is online communicating borderless collaboration so look at in terms of how we can collaborate another way another thing is social wellness how do we actually be part of <coughs> smart cities like uh, uh, sunny just mentioned just now in terms of social empowerment uh, place making be part of the smart city super apps uh, how to create smart citizens uh, those are thematics that we should need, need to look at now and then transdisciplinary info, info, innovations uh, these four that i list out is the four main industry three uh, three main industry that is uh, two uh, making uh, uh, this important logistics is moving throughout the pandemic healthcare is really thriving because a lot of people are sick 
And then FMB, you know, people are ordering for online. But tourism, a little of lacking. How do you actually bring tourism? Because if you bring tourism up, you can bring artists, creativists, and architects up together with the movement. And then the other one is sharing economy. How do we actually <coughs> make income and survival as a community rather than self-centric? Uh, so a lot of the artists are in the metaverse now, dealing with IoT, NFT, and also other things. This actually helps them a lot. I was talking to an artist yesterday, sharing about how he didn't have any money during this pan before pandemic, you know. But after pandemic, some people started teaching him about how to actually sell his uh, art in the metaverse. So it became valuable. All artworks are valuable, similar to us architects. All our creation throughout the process of doing the design is valuable, yeah. And what I did was I reorganized and collaborate with a company, uh, my company architects and also a digital agency. We restructure our model to become a creative management team. And we look back at our service and product. What is the service that we want to provide the unique selling proposition to the uh, pub, uh, public on architecture and also and the product, what we can give. So uh, for the service, what we replan is our planning architects, we pivot to design studio uh, in uh, ID and also our training company. <coughs> and what, uh, what I did for product is I started collaborating with a lot of companies, uh, my friends doing uh, digital technology and then NFT marketplace, FMB, and also, uh, also products. So we cannot solve uh, our problems with the same thinking we use when we created them. That's what Albert Einstein said. And where can architects pivot? So many things that architect can do during this pandemic. If you don't have any idea, this is the idea. Five ideas that I want to give. Number one is the easiest way is sharing knowledge and skill to public. This is like what we're doing now. We share the knowledge and then people get to learn. And whatever you learn, you share back to other people. You know, you can pivot to that and you can actually uh, join the university and then you can actually create trainings or you can collaborate with other professions to do trainings. <laughs> the other one is small works, contracting. As built concept, as built interiors, you know, so many things you can do as with drawings, concept design, interior design, and other things. Specialization in works. A lot of my friends, architects, are uh, saying that there's no work during the pandemic, but a lot of the green sustainable consultants and beam consultants are very busy. And especially uh, also healthcare uh, consultants are very busy. Yeah? So you can actually pivot to that, learn about that. And then technological works, BIM, VR, AR, 3D printing, SOCMED, analytics are also picking up. Some of the architects are joining analytics companies to actually help them with uh, uh, smart cities analytics. And then the last part that we must cherish most is a lot of architects don't cherish is content making. We we'll do a lot of content. Architects are full of skills. That's what we equip in the university. So we can do architectural content, arts, research, and general 3D assets. <clears throat> Use these assets to be your tools to actually empower you to make your survival. This is architecture as its best to become an entrepreneurship. And you, the easiest, you can pivot in education. You can do participate, attend, enroll, organize virtual events. I've actually organized a lot of trainings during, throughout the pandemic and also uh, uh, webinars. And then in the interior designs, uh, home designs, I started pivoting into home designs uh, for renovations because a lot of people are looking into renovations. And then FMB designs as well. Uh, but uh, what is interesting that I want to share is uh, some of the architects, young architects, share with me this. They actually did this new app for their company. So this new app is actually making it easy for the public to actually engage them. Last time we just sent a uh, appointment letter and then people will engage. Now they actually do an app for, by Fira Architects, a yeah, renovation fee calculator. So what he put is his basic architectural uh, fees, and then what's the size like, and then the total, a lot of uh, information. So the service that he can provide as built service, authorities, engineering fee, facade design, uh, and then uh, contracting as well, uh, cabin, uh, cabinet shop drawing, costing. They are, these are small works that you can do special that not many people are doing. And the top of, the top of it, he actually linked it to his WhatsApp and also his Facebook. So you can actually order his service straight to the, to the social media. I foresee that future, some of people are using Yeza, so they can put their design inside there. So this is uh, quite an innovative thing by a young architects. 
And then the other one is uh, is uh, throughout the pandemic, I involved in some projects with uh, my clients doing hybrid art gallery. So what we do is we are to explore the uh, metaverse, uh, metaverse uh, art gallery, and then we are building it on physical. And actually, the the gallery will work together uh, side by side, physical and also actually virtual. So people overseas can enter virtual, and people local or people who travel can do physical. So this is quite interesting. So what you do is actually you enter the space, you look at the artwork. Later on, uh, we will add actually the link to the YouTube and also the personal space. And also sometimes we can call performers to actually be part of the space. You know, quite interesting. Yeah, hopefully they will, this will happen. Huh? And then other things that is uh, pivot is specialized works, new trends in the need for COVID rehabilitation centers. Uh, in Malaysia, there's been talk about uh, people doing apps for people who are sick. Uh, and then uh, post pandemic, a lot of people needs rehab, especially the frontliners. So there are a lot of hotels are being converted into uh, you know, uh, rehab centers. And also some hotels are converted into a public rehab centers. So people are going mental, you know? During this pandemic, so these are something that you can tap it uh, about uh, the rehab centers. You can study about it a lot of need a bit of research. Uh, I myself got uh, some uh, doctors who are actually pivot in technology. They actually call me and then give discussion about what are the components in the hotels. Yeah? Uh, this you can pivot on this, and especially uh, competitions. You can join a lot of competition. There are a lot of competitions happening now. The toy acacia esports and place making so you can join this submit your work content making is very important you always uh, do new contents looking into your thematics like myself i like into sustainability so i put everything about sustainability in comic form so that's how i uh, translate it to uh, the public and also to kids and then creative diversification use your strength and skill I like uh, entertainment, I like music, I like being part of uh, the entertainment world. So I do a lot of concert together with uh, the celebrities and then also uh, manage uh, weddings uh, during pandemic and also re uh, restaurant, uh, how I pivot uh, my restaurant to, uh, with together with the apps to do the road runner system. This side business, but uh, apps making is interesting. Uh, if you look at uh, iPhone, there's only four architects that only have an apps in the iPhone. Yeah, be uh, it Basma Architects, Jadheka Architects in uh, in uh, India, Kyle Zling Architects in I think Russia, and Scott Browning um, Architects in America. So uh, what happens to all the other architects? You know. <laughs> so but uh, uh, you can actually look at their uh, apps, and you can you can actually learn something on how they do business in the apps. The other one is actually social apps. Uh, a lot of the apps looking into how you do uh, smart cities, urban planning, uh, like these apps that uh, I, were, I did for the POC for the government. We were looking into how to actually combine community and financial aid from the, the, the companies around to allow for public to use the river. So that uh, we call it the adopt uh, riverside uh, space. So I, I don't know that whether this will happen. And the other one is uh, another friend of mine did a very good app called Pandemic Assistant app called Kita Jaga Ko, which actually uh, marry the people in need and people who wants to contribute during pandemic. So every day it helps about 10,000 people. That's also a social place making using apps. NFT market is uh, it's a quite a big thing now. Uh, myself, my company is actually doing this. Uh, uh, my, my team is actually doing this uh, new NFT market, I hope. Uh, we are trying to align with architects as well. Uh, some of the things that uh, I actually minted, uh, so you can actually too, uh, put uh, some of your works that is uh, not used and not out there. Uh, you can actually mint it in the NFT market and it has value. You know, you can make some uh, money from it. Some of the upcoming works that I'm doing now is uh, videos, uh, Kids on the Dark. And then this one is uh, university videos on uh, virtual universities and also lost in metaverse. Uh, some of the artwork that I'm actually working on using uh, 3D Max and uh, other, other softwares. And in conclusion, the take back lessons from the skills and also the applications is that 
The main thing is that you know you as a young architect have to know your strength. What is your strength? Whether you have the enough IQ or not, or you how's your emotional now? Is it sad or is it are you happy now? You have to dig deep inside you, and then the SQ social or spiritual quotient. What's your spiritual level now? Huh? How's your religion? Uh, all those things you have to earn it and uh, to look at it. And the best part is. We are in pandemic. Is the resilient, which is the advisory quotient. How do you can overcome whatever challenge that is facing towards you, and know where you can place yourself. Where are you now? If people architects, there is most architects are at the bottom level, bottom of the chain. The, they are doing various initiatives at the public level, and some of the architects are actually working in the government level. And the key is how do you become an architect that is entrepreneur that becomes the communicator and localization towards. Connecting integration of these two parties. When you are integrated into two parties, you can actually do many things together. Looking into awareness, brand placement, execution framework, and big data. And you know these parties are all doing other, uh, specific things, like the high level smart city resilient, and the low level are doing event program. The integration is very important for architects to be part of it. Yeah. And I can share you the recipe. Recipe to overcome this pandemic is simple. Don't compare yourself with others. No one in the world can do better job of being you than yourself. Yeah, you know your strength. If you be yourself, you dig deep, deep your passion. You can do the best. And in conclusion, my final words to everyone is: in order to create a sustainable future, architects must rethink, regroup, rebrand, reinnovate, and remake ourselves towards creating sustainable future and sustainable profession. With that, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Rida, for such a profound、um, sharing with lots of lots of information and ideas and a lot of、uh, effort during the pandemic that you have been doing. I feel like I just、um, have, uh, go through an、uh, architect's clinic <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> to re. Revisit all our、uh, desire to be an architect and what is the best interest of our career pathway. So thank you, Farida, such an amazing welcome, insightful welcome. sharing. So、um, before we move on to the Q and A session, I have to、uh, also do some um, um, check and balance, like、uh, because we have to. Uh, issue e certificate, right?、Um, for people who who have joined this webinar,、uh, congratulations! We will be providing you a participant、um, certificate. So、uh, please、uh, remind, kindly be reminded that、uh, to those who want to get it,、uh, please、uh, fill in the. Google form, which will be shared in the chat box shortly.、Uh, by Dexter is already there, so remember it takes time. So be patient. We will process all this、um, with the help of the committee, and then you will get the e certificate. Thank you all. And once again,、um, we have to thank you. Rita and also、um, the sponsor of the、uh, in by the Acacia Committee of Young Architects, your Yakata chapter and your Yakata Young Architects Forums, and powered by Excelia Hobbies. And、um, also, I need to remind、uh, a very exciting opportunity for you all. Um, all the participants of today to register for this Asian eSport Center Design Challenge, which is the deadline is today. So you have seven hours uh, left uh, or more, right, to to submit any creative idea. So here is the information、uh, showing of this exciting eSport、um, event. Design challenge. Okay, so now shall we move to the Q and A section? Yeah, sure. Rita, are you ready? Okay. Yeah. 
have any question, please also in the same time doing all this um, e-certification registration, please do, uh, please uh, type in question for Rita for a quick discussion. But I would like to start one, with one question. How much time do you have, Rita, in your one day? <laughs> <laughs> all this work that you have showed. Interesting, yeah. interesting. <laughs> Uh, um, I think Sunny, uh, a lot of people actually ask me this question, uh, how much time I have? Uh, but it's actually, um, the thing that is, is that uh, the key to time is actually the discipline. Yeah, because like, uh, I tend to actually, when I do things, I tend to take it very seriously and I can actually partition the, the thematics. Uh, I'm disciplined about it, uh, doing it very fast and also move or move on to the next thing and i i when i move on to the next thing i don't forget the other thing but i know how to block and i learned this to from uh from young i do a lot of writings and sketching in my uh, sketchbook so whenever uh to start an idea i sketch and then i write essays sketch and write essays so when doing this it's actually we create the critical thinking of how to actually move the ideas forward faster because uh, drawing and writing is two different things, right? Drawing is expression, uh, artistic expression. But uh, when you are writing, you are actually using your mind to actually express your thinking to put it on paper. So I think that's how actually uh, from small I do this and then now it's much more easier for me. Yeah, that's a very great tip. And also with a young family, you're able to organize your, your family and work seamlessly <laughs> with the pandemic and you're stuck at home. <laughs> so you're yeah. extra time, right? For everyone. Yeah, yeah the um, other one is like, uh, I collaborate with a lot of people, help people a lot. And then throughout your career, when you're actually working. So uh, I think, uh, in fact, uh, throughout my career, I met Sunny, I met the star. So uh, we collaborate together. Uh, so that's happening in the local scene where we meet a lot of people and we collaborate. I mean, if you put yourself surrounded by people that is positive, you will get positive people. Very true, indeed. Uh, very important to create um, alliances, uh, especially with the technology enable us to cross border without um, traveling <laughs> so we can make very quick uh, alliances and collaboration through the online and all this technology app new apps available i'm is uh, quite interesting that you share all this um great apps have happened just within a year or so I think you guys have uh, been testing out a lot of great ideas and make it happen too. So well, if you have a lot of uh, great ideas, right? Um, I am a uh, graduate, young graduate of the architecture school. How would you recommend them to begin with uh, this journey? How should they, where should they start? Which ideas should they pursue? Ah, that's a... Uh... Uh, interesting question. Eh? I mean, uh, if for the young graduates, if you have an idea in terms of architecture, I mean, uh, for young graduates, of course, the best thing is if you can actually go and work at the architect's office. Uh, learn it all. Learn from a good mentor. And from there, you will acquire all your skills and also your, your license. And at the same time, uh, don't forget that throughout your journey as an architect doing architecture, you will have a lot of hobbies and passion. Some of you will like to collect things. Some of you will like to sing. Some of you like toys, you know. Some of you like, uh, you know, uh, music and, and acting, yeah. So uh, this is uh, what is interesting that uh, you cannot uh, deny people from passion, you know. Passion, when it's your passion, you will do it forever. And with passion, you make you happy. So uh, my advice is when you have new ideas, you look into uh, what number one is, what is the direction that you want to take the ideas to? What level do you want to take? Is it to the research level or writing levels 
or at the level where you want to actually create innovations. Uh, if you do that, you want to create innovations. Uh, dig, dig, dig. How do you actually want to do the networking? Uh, find the right people to collaborate because uh, we are architects. We always think that we can do everything, like Superman. We cannot do everything. We cannot do coding and then you know software. It's like uh, the projects that I'm doing, the NFT market. Uh, I'm I collaborate with uh, five very uh, smart uh, in, uh, entrepreneurs. They are software engineers and lawyers uh, and cybersecurity. So. Uh, they bring me inside there to actually assist them in terms of doing the system. So uh, that that is something that is uh, very important that uh, you do the networking and then from there, you want to develop the, the uh, business model together with your collaborators. That's very important. What is the best business model? Whether it's a voluntarily business model, you do it uh, freely together to create new things or subsequently, uh, there is a business model where you can make a lot, um, some money after, towards, after, after that, yeah. So those are some of the tips that I can give for you to actually develop your ideas toward entrepreneurship. Uh, unlike some uh, traditionally people actually idea sketch and then do the drawings and then put on the Facebook or whatever must, uh, at the competition, you can actually do more. Yeah. Great. Thank you for yeah. tips. Um, I know that's the, the webinar committee. It's just freshly graduated from NUSS. Uh, so I would like to see if you have some great question for Rita. Hi, hi. Thank you so much. I was like, actually, right, I, I always have, almost every day, I think I discuss with Rita about something. Not only about architecture, but, but anything yeah. like this. <laughs> Rita, for me, is a you know, very crazy chairman, crazy in the positive way, okay? <laughs> because he always has a, a lot of ideas, but you know, even though, even though I already see actually the presentation for today, but when Rida presented, it feels different. I was like, I was about to have a standing uh, applause, <laughs> but <laughs> this is on Zoom, so. Uh, so and anyway, thank you so much that it's really inspired me, um, but then, I have some questions actually, right? So uh, yep. the first one is, uh, as you said before, uh, for the young architects after we graduated from the study, and then uh, of course we don't have any experience yet. This is, I think, this is where for me, uh, for me, it's a uh, quite problematic because if you don't have any experience, uh, uh, because you know in school, um, what they teach us is mostly it's. It's not, it's not hundred percent happening in the real project. And when we do the real projects, also there are a lot of things that is happen that we never know in school. That's that's the problem. So we learn by doing. That's for me, but I don't know the others. But what happened? What happened to me is something like that. So uh, now, in terms of the, uh, you know, our resilience, uh, like like in this situation, like a COVID thing. For example, a uh, fresh graduate and then join a big company and then, uh, you know, start to work, become a one of architects. Usually in the big company, we we are, we have a responsibility in a certain thing and then we're doing that in, the, you know, maybe a few years. And then after that, suddenly there's a COVID thing, for example. But, you know, we got already uh, our position here. But, we you know, because we, we are doing and we are working in such a big company, and we don't have any time like you because you do your own work and then you can, you know, uh, try to plan uh, your, your own time. But if we are working in such a company, company we cannot do that, of course. And our time is like uh, uh, we have to dedicate it for our works. So cannot think about the hobby, cannot think about having another business things. So, uh, so my question is actually how, how the people who already in this position can handle this situation like the COVID. Because suddenly, for example, the, the company will close down or they, they fired uh, some of the staff, including this person. So do you have any thoughts or do you have any advice for, for this person? Because it's just okay. like right? Yeah. So uh, actually, uh, they start, a lot of my friends uh, from big companies call me out. Mm -hmm. They are very worried because uh, they might get uh, uh, cut down salary a lot, almost 50 to 60%, or some even retrench. 
some of my friends being retrenched for, from big companies. Yeah. Uh, so what I see uh, is that uh, uh, how do they actually overcome this? Mm-hmm. When uh, when we talk about this, they share that uh, they actually look back at what is their SWOT analysis, their strength and opportunity. Yeah. They look back at when they are primary school, they are high school and in university, a lot of skills that they develop that they forgot about it. Yeah, some even are very good uh, painters, uh, some are very good sketchers, singing. some are singing, <laughs> acting. You know, when we were small, a lot of things that we explore, we forgot that element, you know. Even in, uh, in the university, we have this uh, friends, architects friends, not all the time we do 24 hours architecture, right? We go out, you know. Uh, that is actually the things that you are actually good at and you love it. So what they did is actually they bring that back. Some of my friends are very good at artwork. So they actually start to doing uh, models, small models and sell it on Shopee. Yeah. Oh, Some of them yeah. actually uh, do, uh, you know, uh, like the, you know, the mask, a fast mask. But yeah. architects are good in graphics. You know, so they match the graphics together, extrusion, all those. So uh, a lot of this from big companies, uh, they they actually lost when they go out. But but one thing you cannot uh, buy, uh, cannot uh, one thing that they learn. One is uh, big companies you can actually get a lot of exposure in big projects. That hence you have a lot of high level uh, tech skills. Uh, and then the other one is networking. They have a lot of networking. So when they move out, it's just a matter of how to look back and use back what they have, their tools, which is the networking, the technology that they have learned, and then the networking of uh, people that they have actually met in the company uh, itself, where a lot of the a lot of the company people already also move out, right? They go to other businesses as well. Not all go into architecture. Some are doing other things. So the key is actually how to actually leverage on what you already have. Uh, once you leverage on what you have, you bring in the element of passion and then bring in the element of inspiration. Uh, that will create something that is happy for you. You know? Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. So nice. I would like to end on, add on that point too because um, yeah. we are um, basically also facing the same pandemic at the same time. Uh, slightly more differently in different contexts, but we are a community-based, activity-based, uh, physical activity-based workshop type of uh, NGOs, right, uh, or education institute. So what happens if everyone cannot travel into Hong Kong or outside to have tours? Um, then, then we have to think of new ways of doing things. So. We take on, um, we, we make use of our space that we have and then we hybridize it. Like, or we acquire some um, external or additional uh, audiovisual system and then make, uh, make your, your presentation and your face in two separate uh, TV screen one to one. So your face like, oh, you're, uh, the, your professor is right in front of you, but 10 times bigger his face even. <laughs> <laughs> so all this, I think that as education, uh, educator also trying out differently because architectural studio is very, um, require different skill set to be trained, right? You have to go to studio every day physically. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's where creativity also have to come in. And we sit down and think positively and then work together with uh, others and try it out different things. Cool. Uh, yeah. So another thing, yeah. Uh, I think it's also related because we just got the message on the chat box. Uh, uh, my second question is actually related to this. Uh, so I saw, I saw that uh, you know, uh, there's there's some young architects are creating a kind of marketplace for a house design. I think I show I showed to read that already <laughs> before. Uh, but you know, architects is always because we are in the associations. We uh, you know have a talk about the ethics and other things. But you know, the situation is really push us to. To, to think about anything that we can do to survive, right? 
So this kind of thing may be actually a good idea, but uh, you know, it, I don't know. Do Do you have any opinion on this? And and then maybe you can continue to answer the the one on the chat box. I think it's still related. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> this is a very difficult question to answer, Desta, because uh, <laughs> different country, different rules. And recently, I saw uh, one of the Arcadia country. They actually uh, put in uh, control of content in their uh, architects' rules mm. uh, regulation that uh, architects cannot simply put any contents uh, without uh, without any 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 proper re regulation. But uh, for you know the for in this pandemic, people need to survive, and when people do it, then you know you have to do what you have to do. But uh, for 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 architects that is uh, trained as an architect and then after that graduate uh, to uh, legalize yourself it's best for you to register with your board of architects and also the the uh, associations that will uh, create credibility to yourself so once you put your credibility to yourself uh, then you can actually look at the parameters of where you want to pivot your business if you want to do architecture, definitely you have to get an architecture license to do the architecture. But if you want to pivot into something that is related to technology, you don't need an architecture license. You need to be, you can be a graduate license as long as you are credible and then uh, as a, a link to the Architects Institute, then you can pivot to your technology at the same time, respect the institute or the rules of the architects. As simple as that. Yeah? So, like myself, I do a lot of business and I'll sometimes, uh, not to say a lot of people happy with me in this stuff, I encroach with other territory. Some people don't ha not happy when I encroach in uh, interior design or planning, you know, because uh -huh. yeah. I have to respect other professions as well, because I don't have that degree, you know, uh -huh. uh, but, 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 but uh, this is part of the way that you don't bulldoze, you find what is the proper channel to do it, like uh, maybe sharing session, uh, meet the people who are in there, discuss, and then do it properly. Yeah? Because if you don't do it properly, people will attack. Mm. You know, once you attack, you have to prepare your mental how to prepare, uh, how to prepare with the attack. Uh, so you know, uh, this is uh, something like uh, you know, uh, you have to uh, experience this, but subject to how you do it lah. Like myself, I tend to take a little bit back, back, back step, step back. I think the risk first and then I plan out and if the risk come, I will face it. Uh, so, a little bit difficult, the question. Yeah. But in, in, for that question, I think I think your institute can answer that. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, depends on the association. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, this, this, this kind of thing is always be, uh, you know, like a pro and contra. Lah in every association right in every country all right yeah why they have this regulation why they have this regulation is because to protect the public public yeah uh that's the thing uh you have to remember it's not actually protecting uh, us as architects mm -hmm. actually protecting the public from uh the construction you know yeah. Uh, you know, safety hazards and everything uh, so that's why the regula regula regulations is very important yeah so it's um, echoing what uh, Rita also mentioned in the beginning. We cannot do everything by ourselves. We have to yeah. find the domain experts and collaborate with them. So create a bigger pie for everyone to enjoy and work together what they are good at. So yeah, sharing think, economy. Uh, this sharing yeah, economy. Sharing economy. Uh, like like Grab and uh, you know Grab uh, and the rest of the new uh, apps, right? <laughs> yeah. Now even Shopee have have a Shopee food. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Shopee. Yeah, yeah. Shopee. <laughs> Shopee food suddenly came out. Maybe we can also open to other friends who want to ask question there. Yeah, just go on and open your mic and ask, post a question to us, to Rita. Yeah. Oh, there's this question there in the chat box. Maybe he's shy. We're not asking uh, directly. 
<laughs> oh wow, a very very sensitive question, <laughs> no challenging <laughs> question. Uh, so, hi Rita, do you think that our profession will survive in the future as doing business are getting more competitive and costlier than ever before? Yeah, I think uh, this question uh, is very, uh, very important because a lot of people start to quest re-question this during pandemic. Uh, the answer is very simple. Our profession will always survive because it has been around there since day one when uh, the first human being was around. Shelter, you know? Oh. The shelter that creates, you know, needs for buildings yeah? or environment for people. So... Of course, uh, I, our profession will uh, will will survive. Just that, uh, if we, uh, I think, if we continue doing the same thing, because all the other industries are moving very forward in terms of uh, trends, but uh, if uh, our industry uh, profession doesn't uh, pivot towards the trend of the what is demanded by people, I think it's quite difficult. Uh, uh, the hard part is this, the hard part is you know artists uh, artists eh, back in the old days. Go away last time when they draw, they actually make a lot of money. Be, uh, make a lot of money. You know, people pay them. But as you progress, uh, artists' uh, salary become lower and lower and lower. And then when the digitalization came, suddenly, you know, uh, their, their, their artwork become very low. The one that is fine arts or can make it, can make it. But the one that is uh, the street artist is very for, hard for them to work. Uh, similarly to some of the, you know, uh, last time uh, when my office, my, my parents set up my architect's office, the architect's office. So when we, when I was younger, I always go to the office and when we look at uh, renderings, uh, it took about one and a half months to get a few renderings up, you know. So when we have the design drawing floor plans and everything, we sketch the outline of the drawings, then we send to the renderers. Renders will do the uh, image and then will pass back to us. And then that one, one or two months, that is leeway time for us to do design discussions with the client. But now the problem is uh, the speed of technology is that the, you meet the client, the client wants the 3D yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So it's very difficult, right? So uh, I think that our, our profession will survive is how we actually look at it and uh, package it in a different way in the future. There are some architects already looking into uh, mergers between companies. Uh, I, I heard there, there's this architect in Malaysia, he's merging nine companies together. Nine architects' companies together. Amazing. <laughs> I don't know about other countries. Lah. I had discussion with a few architects to merge. We cannot decide the name. <laughs> So that didn't happen, but I think my friend did uh, make it work. So I don't know how they do it. Maybe you can ask him. But uh, these areas, uh, a lot of mechanism that we have to discuss about consortium agreements, management. Uh, I know it's, uh, the, the person who asked this question is quite uh, well versed in consortium agreements. Yes, there's a yes, lot of airport. Yes. He does a lot, uh, a lot of airports. Yeah? Uh, so, yeah, good questions. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, good discussion as well. Yeah. So, I, I see many people uh, keep joining us. Um, I hope <laughs> that can, Maybe there's uh, a question on the Facebook. Uh, oh, yes. Amazing. Congrats. Nasib baik. Uh, what? Using Malaya? <laughs> oh, this is not a question uh, in the Facebook. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, Rida, I, I have another question, yeah. Uh, this is relating mm. to the young architect as well. Uh, so, um, of course, now, uh, for example, I, because I just graduated from a master program, and uh, the program that I took, the name is Integrated Sustainable Design Course. Yes, like, we know now it's quite a trend. But uh, for you, yeah, in, in your perspective, actually, because uh, after the undergraduate study, and then uh, if we want to continue uh, studying the master, there are a lot of choices, right, for architects. You can be a landscape designer, you can be uh, uh, in integrated sustainable design, you can be urban design, you can be everything, urban planning or other things. Uh, uh, from your perspective, 
uh, and then seeing this kind of situation and all the things lah, all the factors that you can think. <laughs> like uh, which one that you think uh, a good or the, which one that you recommend to uh, the young architects that want to continue the study? All right. Thank you, Adesta, for the question. I would like to share you some tips lah when after I graduate. Eh? So when I, after I graduate, I was like looking at uh, because uh, being an architect under my father, I am under his the, his shadow. So when I meet people, people always say, uh, "Anak ini, son of this, son of this, son of this." I was like pressure, you know, mm. yeah, pressure because like similar to my sister, so she had the same problem where people call her sister of this, sister of Rida, sister of Rida, you know. Mm-hmm. So what happened was, uh, I challenged myself saying that how I can be better than my uh, ni, my father you know so what happened was i put a set a goal every year i have to achieve one education which is lifelong learning i already practice lifelong learning from first year of graduating so what i did was the first year is i went around looking for uh, any cor- short courses uh, and then after that uh, year by year about uh, contracts about uh, arbitration, about green, green. Uh, that's why you see now I have a lot of qualification, which actually uh, I build it up from the first year I graduate. Night schools, I do a lot of night. I went to a lot of night schools when after I graduate. I, well, the day during the day I work until six seven, and at night night schools on the weekend sometimes a weekend school, and then uh, till a point where I'm ready to go to uh, doing my diploma or masters, so I have to decide. So like I said just now, you have your passion throughout your working in your office, you will start to trigger a certain point of interest. Yeah? yeah? So there's two routes to actually choosing the right course if you want to do masters or PhD, is <coughs> whether you are interested in within the same realm within in the industry. So you can do, you know, a masters in project management, project a master's in sustainability architecture right but uh, for some people like myself i i like the big picture so i didn't do this master's in sustainability architecture i did master's in sustainable management which is equivalent to uh, business admin manage, administration uh, masters so you know it's actually how you look at it if you want to actually be part of the industry uh within the content of the industry so be it but if you want to have a bigger spectrum of uh the wider angle wider uh wider audience of people so you can actually go towards that but the key is actually uh one education is not the overall thing you have to plan lifelong learning from after graduates and then uh after post graduates and then after that what you want to learn every year like myself during this pandemic i learned so much uh, I mean, going to do uh, webinars and also attending. Even um, I applied for some of the new schools for next year. But uh, I don't know whether we'll get in uh, on uh, learning about heritage and also placemaking. This is now my interest in heritage. I don't know why I've been buying a lot of books on heritage. Maybe becoming heritage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, that's great. I'm very... Very concurrent with the lifelong uh, learning approach because the society is also changing. All these um, challenges also changes accordingly. And then what we're facing now is extreme climate too. So I think yeah. it's a, a great time for for the young graduates to to think about how can we be a better architect to the nature, right? Yeah. How can we embrace the um, uh, natural resources into our management, flow of management or design uh, system? Yeah, yeah. actually uh, yeah. what Sunny said was true. Uh, actually, uh, the subject of climate change, not many architects are into it. That's something that uh, architects need to look at and do a lot of research in. Yes, and especially in the APEC region where we have a tremendous abundance of uh, natural resources and we're developing quickly. And that's the 
point where we maybe it's good to stop and reflect what we are doing or the way with that we have used to be doing is it true uh, should we keep on doing that way or yeah. not right how can we provide shelter yet in a sustainable way for both human and nature yeah that, that's then, what I, i've been always thinking of uh, how how and, and, yeah if and, we are and going I need to the Paris. Food, food. <laughs> and then also the food sufficiency Food, yeah. yeah? Uh, how we integrate with our living, yeah? That's another part of it, yeah? Yeah. Um, how, how can we close the loop? We designed uh, our architectural profession is a little bit um, in segmentation with mm. different silos. So that's create great problems. So the supply chain doesn't work when we have to reinvent the wheel has to be the whole system. So yeah, has to all uh, participants to, to think about and share ideas in your context. Yeah, it's a, in other words, it's like a living blockchain. How do we design our living blockchain? Oh, I don't know that. Blockchain also being um, criticized by the energy used, right? So yes, everything yeah. come back to the source, how how we can provide a long-term strategy for all this energy exhausting invention, right? Yeah. So even when uh, we digitalize it, it actually the energy is transformed in another way and store it. You still need data uh, center, right? You still need... Yeah. Um, that- that's a lot of energy. How do we actually create a circular uh, economy to it? Yeah. Yeah, like uh, Texas yeah. has a um, big energy uh, outage and everything stop, right? The blockchain stop, yeah. crypto also I, stop. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember when I went to Japan last time, uh, visit some of the cities, uh, industrial cities. So uh, a lot of the incinerators, they come up with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, the smoke, right? So, you know, they do the combustion and this combustion, they actually turn it into energy and return back to the grid. Eh? Uh, so we have to need to think about the whole cycle of circular economy of this year. So I'm, I'm um, very confident that architects have their creative way to tackle these challenges, not just to make ourselves um, fall back into a, a smaller position, but actually proactively engage this kind of challenges and um, then you will you you will help make our, um, our 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 profession be a better one right yeah I remember one of the past president of Singapore uh, he told uh, he told us that uh, architects is actually the healers of the universe mm-hmm. I don't know whether it can be materialized or not <laughs> but some people don't think it's true. <laughs> it's yeah. always pro and contra lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Balance, balance. Yeah. All right. Wow, so All right. Amazing. I think I think today's discussion is a uh, like uh, open open our eyes wider, especially for the young architects. Uh, because like, uh, you know, as a young architects, uh, usually what we think is only after we finish uh, the, the study, the undergrad study, and then, okay, uh, we work on a kind of like company or something, or maybe uh, uh, another way is like helping the professor and then later become a professor. So. <laughs> Traditional <That's> way. What... <laughs> Only that thing, uh, like uh, not a lot of people are thinking about the other, uh, you know, you, like your ideas, you do the, the, a lot of businesses and other things. Like, okay, maybe like one last question from, from me, uh, for Rida, like you, uh, maybe not all people can have the initiative, right? I think, I think it needs an initiative. Not all people can do that. Uh, and, uh, do you think that actually, actually maybe actually all the people has that that they they just don't want to push themselves or something or if 
this can possible like how to push ourselves to really being a very innovative person so that we can find those those ideas those other things those the, the one that you know actually can can make us survive not just only think straightly okay after graduate i'll work in this place and then blah blah, blah until suddenly you become old <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, this one is very good question because uh, in uh, in this world, uh, I don't know. I met a lot of people, right? There's some people that is the mouth is faster than the hand. Some people are the hand is faster than the mouth. Yeah. You, you know, uh, uh, there's that. There's a uh, talk about that, right? So I noticed that uh, you know, in order for you to actually be good and do a lot of things your hand must be faster than your mouth so when you have your ideas you uh, put it on paper like I just i shared just now sketch and then do like write things plan it collaboratively with people find the best value chains what is the business model from there you can actually push uh, and act on the idea very fast uh, but if you are uh, your mouth is faster than your hands you keep on talking and talking and then after one and a half years of pandemic you haven't done anything yeah, so you know, uh, like uh, a lot of my friends, we we like to actually do action more than uh, talking. <laughs> like, let people talk. The one thing is let people talk. People will always talk about what your ideas is. But you show to them what your ideas and the value of your ideas is. Then you prove them wrong. Just do it. Nike say so. <laughs> I... I very very good point i always have yeah. to test your ideas with getting your hands dirty yes uh, failing is the beginning of a successful yeah. uh, ah, that's a very good point uh, don't scared of failure that's the hardest challenge for architects we always scared of failure right uh, mm. just keep on doing uh, I, I feel a lot of my companies closed down. Actually, some of my startup closed down. But, uh, you know, it didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, not, uh, not scared of failure. A lot of uh, great uh, entrepreneurs, they have says, is they call themselves serial startup, right? They have uh, uh, at least a startup 100 or 20, 20 startups failed before they get one unicorn so yeah <laughs> very common to fail get fail uh in the business uh, startup uh, ecosystem that how you test your your ideas and learn from those experience especially you're young nothing to lose yet right <laughs> yeah correct correct yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i think if i were to give a last advice is actually for young architects uh, currently, uh, in the in the world, uh, there's so many things to explore, you know. Uh, and then don't limit yourself to things that you 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 to uh, to explore. Just do everything, do everything, and then explore everything and try out everything. And then, uh, as your career pass through, you will, everything will the dots will be connected. Automatically, it will integrate. I don't know. That's like God's. Uh, power or God's fit, suddenly everything interconnected together. And the connection happens differently and different way at the point of different life, life period. So that's the beauty of this journey. Yeah? Live only once and do your best and live life to the fullest. Thank you. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you. I'm uh, cautious of time. We are... Uh, closing this session right so thank you Rita and thank you all the participants and um, we look forward to other great uh, events that um, host by the Arcasia committee <laughs> next next year right next term so thank you all for joining let's start over to you hello Hi. Rita Oh, ah, we have one. I'm Teddy ah. from Indonesia. Ya, apa kabar Pak Teddy? Hey, luar biasa. Ya, yeah. sama Pak. You are luar biasa. 
How to say in English is luar biasa, amazing. Amazing, ya. Yeah. Yeah? I right. think, ya, yeah, you already be a superman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dah. All right. Uh, yeah. Any question? I, I, I would like Tadi. to be friend with you. So can you give me handphone number, ya? Yeah? <laughs> so we can con- context, keep context sure. each other. Sure, uh, Baba. You are very smart, ya. Yeah? As long I join this meeting, ya, yeah, for seven session, ya, yeah, you are the smartest architect, <laughs> right? Uh, so, no. <laughs> so I want to uh, become friend with you. Alright, Baba. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Teddy, for your compliment. Thank you, you for can, your compliment. Yeah, thank you for joining all the seven talks. Thank you for your great support. Bapak Teddy is our strong supporter in our program. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't miss any of the program. Thank you, Pak Teddy. Seven sessions. Seven sessions. Uh, yeah. um, remember for your certificate, fill in the form. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pak.